Well, Reverend Jackson, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank uh, you, sir. I want to begin by looking at your historic run for office. When you uh, laid claim to the Democratic uh, nomination, how did that pave the way for a Barack Obama presidency? I don't want to be that presumptuous, but suffice right. it to say, at some point, someone starts saying, run, just a run. And if I had not run, it was like I would have set people up right. to disappoint them. Right. So, so I ran in 84. I learned what is a surrogate. I learned the campaign in, in Iowa and New Hampshire, not just in the southern states. We were told uh, you shouldn't go to Iowa. Iowa is too white. Only to get to the find you can't be valid if you don't take it all on. So by going to Iowa, we found that the family farmer and who had lost their farm to the, to the corporate farmer and the black industry, the worker who had lost their job, the corporations going abroad, had more in common than they realized. So it was an economic class issue. Class issue. And so we began to hook up the family farmer and, and right. the unemployed urban worker. And out of the, a coalition was born. So we got double digits in Iowa. That was a big deal. We actually beat Gore and Gephardt in Iowa. That was a big deal. But how many whites could hear our voices beyond the limits of race? That, that's significant. Uh, you mentioned that because, uh, you know, Ron Jesse Ron were the newspaper headlines. And uh, People to this day refer to that era as one of the watershed moments in American politics, in democratic politics. Did you feel that you were on the threshold of a major change? And when you look back, do you feel it was a great move for you to have made that kind of a bold run and to really democratize the process? I didn't know how big the moment was in the moment because right. I was really running as an organizer. In the political season, the primaries, the candidates determined the agenda in the press. We couldn't get our civil rights issues raised. We were talking about urban policy and free Mandela and, and gender equality. We couldn't be hurt by running, running for the presidency. And so by 88, that was an appreciation of what we brought to the conversation. I remember one night we were told, uh, Jesse, you know, tomorrow night we're going to, uh, you've been in all these debates where we're going to discuss foreign policy. So if you don't want to come, you don't have to because we know your, your foreign policy and all just, you know, we understand. I said, well, we, I said, I'm anxious to be part of the foreign policy of the conversation. I said, what do you know about foreign policy? I said, we can't be on the foreign policy. Slavery was the foreign policy. I said, oops. <laughs> <laughs> One day I was in the gym with then Senator Barack Obama. He said, you know, I was in Columbia when you debated Hart and Mundell. I started, started to be, and I said, this can happen. That sounds like my mind. He said, this can happen. And someone seeds for the next generation was our ultimate mission. We didn't have the money to compete at the highest level of fundraising. Now we broken down enough cultural walls, enough had not come down. Right. But he said, I said as a student said, this can happen. When I watched him walk across that stage that night as the winner and tears flowed down my face, it, it happened. So often you plant seeds mm -hmm. that grow trees in whose shade you will never sit. I saw the seed we planted grew a tree, and I sat under the shade watching the winter. That was a big deal. Bernie Sanders made it clear on the campaign trail to let us know, Senator Bernie Sanders, that he supported your run in the 80s for president. And he built lightly his populism on your campaign of the 80, 84 and 88 in, in challenging the status quo and so forth. He brought a lot of people around th this movement, the Sanders movement, around democratic politics. Uh, what happens to that movement now moving forward as they demand account political accountability? Those who were in that movement must be long distance runners. If they let their inspiration evaporate or turn into vapor now, it was just a, a fad. They must not allow themselves not to vote feverishly to fulfill the mission. In 84, when I ran, there was something called one to take all. To become a delegate, you had to get 35% of the vote, which is exceptionally high. We reduced it down to 15. And we moved from one to take all to proportionality. That means you get 50%, I get 49%. So close races, you're still under one big tent. We call it the Jackson rule then. Well, I don't want to be that presumptuous, but <laughs> it helped. Uh, you, you get your share. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, sir. Right. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, founder and president of the Rainbow Push Coalition, America's premier civil rights leader. I'm Ben Calais Thompson.